Good morning and welcome to our service today. One of the lectionary readings today is taken from Psalm 119. I don't know if uh, any of you remember, but one Beach Mission reunion that we had here, Roy Hutchinson made us all stand up and read the entirety of Psalm 119 together. And if I remember rightly, it took about 20 or 25 minutes. <laughs> so I'm not gonna make you do that this morning, but just a couple of verses. It says, your word is a lamp to my feet. And later, your statutes are my heritage forever. They are the joy of my heart. You know, we think of laws sometimes as restricting us, but God's laws set us free, free to be the people that he made us to be. And repeatedly in the Old Testament, he says, be holy as I am holy. So he mustn't think it's an unrealistic demand. <laughs> he made us to reflect him and he has rescued us. He has forgiven us, cleansed us from our sin, drawn us into his family and kingdom and given us his Holy Spirit to help us live according to his law, his wonderful word, um, for our benefit and for his glory. So this morning we're going to sing holy, holy, holy together and put our minds and our hearts on the one who is the author and the perfecter of our faith.
Thank you, Lord Jesus. You accomplished all that you came to do. You sat down at the right hand of God. You suffered and died at the hands of your creation. You rose in victory. You give us the strength and purpose every day to live for you. Thank you for your forgiveness, your freedom, your love, and the joy that is only found in knowing you as our Heavenly Father. We thank you, Lord. Amen. Shall we sing together, Jesus shall take the highest honour. Isaiah 55, verse 10 to 13, and I read, As the rain and the snow come down from heaven, and do not return to it without watering the earth, and making it bud and flourish, so that it yields seeds for the shower and bread for the eater, so is my words that goes out from my mouth, it will not return to me empty, but will accomplish what I desire and achieve the purpose for which I sent it. You will go out in joy and be let forth in peace. The mountains and hills will burst into song before you, and all the trees of the field will clap their hands. Instead of the thorn bush will grow the pine tree, and instead of briars, the myrtle will grow. 
This will be for the Lord's renown, for an everlasting sign which will not be destroyed. Matthew chapter 13, verse 1 to 9. Later that same day, Jesus left the house and sat beside the lake. A large crowd soon gathered around him, so he got into a boat. Then he sat there and taught as the people stood on the shore. He told many stories in the form of parables, such as this one. Listen, a farmer went out to plant some seeds. As he scattered them across his field, some seeds fell on a footpath and the birds came and ate them. Other seeds fell on shallow soil with underlying rock. The seeds sprouted quickly because the soil was shallow. But the plants soon wilted under the hot sun. And since they didn't have deep roots, they died. Other seeds fell among thorns that grew up and choked out the tender plants. Still other seeds fell on fertile soil, and they produced a crop that was thirty, sixty, and even a hundred times as much as had been planted. Anyone with ears to hear should listen and understand. Matthew 13, 18 to 23. Now listen to the explanation of the parable about the farmer planting seeds. The seed that fell on the footpath represents those who hear the message about the kingdom and don't understand it. Then the evil one comes and snatches away the seed that was planted in their hearts. The seed on the rocky soil represents those who hear the message and immediately receive it with joy. But since they don't have deep roots, they don't last long. They fall away as soon as they have problems or are persecuted for believing God's word. The seed that fell among the thorns represents those who hear God's word. But all too quickly, the message is crowded out by the worries of this life and the lure of wealth so no fruit is produced. The seed that fell on good soil represents those who truly hear and understand God's word and produce a harvest of 30, 60 or even 100 times as much as had been planted. Isn't it wonderful that we can worship God together in singing and listening to the Bible readings and opening our hearts and minds to God's word during our weekly Sunday service? Oh, we are so blessed. The Lake of Galilee is the setting for Christ's ministry as he spoke in parables from a boat. The lake or sea, as it's often called, is approximately 12 miles, miles long and 7 miles wide at its widest point. It was at the north of the lake that Jesus fed 5,000 people and on the east side of the lake, known as the Decapolis, the 4,000. It was known as Decapolis because of its 10 cities. From the Mount of Beatitudes where Jesus gave the Sermon of the Mount, you can see right the way down to Capernaum, the place where Jesus based his Galilean ministry right on the lakeside. On the edge of the lake, and looking down from the Mount of Beatitudes, is a lovely beach which commemorates where Jesus spoke to the crowds from a boat. Mark tells us that the crowd was so great that Jesus got into the boat went over the water and sat in the boat. Where did all these crowds come from? Well, Mark tells us in his account of this story that when they heard all that Jesus was doing, people came for, to him from Judea, a hundred miles away, Jerusalem, 98 miles away, Idumea in the south of Israel, 130 miles an hour away, and the regions across the Jordan, a hundred miles away. Tyre and Sidon were 30 miles away. 
Isn't it amazing that so many people came to gather to watch Jesus? They must have arrived either walking or on donkey or in a cart or on a camel. And it must have taken most of these people a long time and a great expense to go and listen to Jesus. Truly, there were many holiday makers up in Galilee having time off to go and to listen to the King of Kings. Jesus was worth listening to. He wanted them to hear and to listen. How could such a crowd hear him? Well, when a boat goes on water and there are people inside talking, water carries sound in a wonderful way. And so the sound across the water would reach as many people as possible as Jesus was speaking from the boat. Flat water surface amplifies the sound you're making. Now Jesus taught in parables and the parable is an earthly story with a heavenly meaning. Most headings in our Bible entitle this passage the parable of the sower. Maybe we should call it the parable of the seed because that's where the focus is. There's more about seed in this passage than there is about the sower. The parable in the seeds are all good seeds. It's where they land on the ground that causes the problem. Point one, the seed on the path. Those who will not listen. As he was scattering the seed, some fell by, along by the path. The birds came and ate it up. And that's likened to the people who hear the message, but it doesn't last in their hearts. The enemy steals it and takes it away. It's good seed that God is speaking into their ears, but they are not listening. They will not listen. They listen to the enemy instead who steals away the seed. The enemy snatches the word away and they turn a deaf ear to God. If they'd listened, they would have understood. That's why we have two ears and one mouth, so that we can listen twice as much as we speak. The ground that the seed landed on is very hard. That's why the birds could just come and pick it off the path. And sometimes hardness can creep into a Christian's life. Certainly it made those people hard against the Lord. The disciples even hardened their heart against the Lord once over the issue of the feeding of the five thousand. They had not understood about it. Their hearts were hardened. And Christians can sometimes enter into a hardness of heart. The Old Testament Ezekiel speaks into this. He speaks to God's people and he records that the nation had turned away and hardened their hearts. And yet there's hope. What did he say? I will give you a new heart and put a spirit within you, a new spirit, the Holy Spirit. I will remove from you your heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh, a heart that feels. Oh, we don't want a hard heart to God. We want a soft heart to him. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. What a wonderful promise that is, as we do, as we follow the Lord Jesus. If you love God with all your heart, you don't want to disobey him. You don't want the enemy to steal the treasure of the good seed. That's point two, the rocky ground. Those whose response is superficial. Well, there are those where the seed lands on the ground and they hear it or they listen and they receive it with joy but in a short time when difficult has happened there's no root 
The seed has lost its root. It can't root down into the ground because of all the stones. They quickly fall away. Difficulties come up. And you may be tempted in your life to walk away too. To throw in the towel and to give up. Well, look, we used to have a saying years ago, keep on keeping on. We've heaven to look forward to and heaven can also be in our hearts. Consider it pure joy, says James. My brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, and you may be facing lots of trials today, don't give up. Because James says that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking in anything. So may we not be like the seed that fell in the rocky ground with no root. Our root is the word of God, the Bible. It is an anchor for our soul, isn't it, in the Lord Jesus? We're called to open our hearts to God in prayer and we're open to fellowship. We can fellowship in some respects as we gather round our service every Sunday and as we zoom in at the prayer meeting on a Wednesday night. Now, it's not the best way to be able to meet, as we all know. We can't wait to see people and get back into the church. And we're looking and thinking about how that can be done. Point three, the seed amongst the thorns. Those preoccupied with other concerns. The seed amongst the thorns speaks of the deceitfulness of wealth that choke the word, making it unfruitful. Now, you know, in Luke's Gospel, when he refers to the parable of the sower, he says some interesting things. And he says some interesting things about women. He talks about Mary Magdalene, Joanna, the wife of Chutza, the manager of Herod's household, Susanna, and many others, meaning many other women, these women were helping to support Jesus and the disciples out of their own means. They had wealth and they were using it in the right way by sharing it with others, namely in this respect, Jesus and the disciples to keep them going. Paul says to young Timothy, command the Christians to do good, to be rich in good deeds, and to be generous and willing to share. There's no such a thing as a tight-fisted Christian. That's an oxymoron. Do you have open hearts and open hands to Jesus today? We have a Heavenly Father that cares for us. He reminds us not to worry about life. And he tells us, therefore I tell you not to worry about your life, what you eat or drink or about your body or what you will wear. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothes? Look at the birds of the air. They don't sow or reap or store away in barns and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Can any one of you, by worrying, Add a single hour to your life. Our Father cares for us. He'll provide and look after us. Even the birds are precious to him. Over these last few weeks, we've been walking round the grounds after Sunday service. And one occasion when we were walking round the grounds, there was a little jackdaw, just a little fledgling. And he followed us all the way to the path. And when we got to the path, I thought to myself, I think I'll give this little jackdaw something to eat. So I went into the house and got a, a, a tea cake and crushed it up and put it on the pavement. Along he came, looking at us, looking at that, looking at us, looking at that, and he gobbled it all down and flew away. Well, the interesting thing is, every day at lunchtime now, 
He knocks on the window and he's looking for something and he eats hungrily whatever we give him. And it's got to a point now where he will actually eat it from our hands. You should see him gulp down all the little crumbs and the things that we give to him. And he's quite fussy. He won't eat anything. Now we don't want to be fussy with the word of God. We want to eat it all. We want to be sustained and established in the word, just like that little bird gobbling everything up. And if God cares for him, how much will he care for us? He's, of course, not dependent upon us. There's all sorts of food all around which he could eat, but he happens just to like us. And then point four. There are those who put Christ first and are fruitful and have a great love and heart for us. Think of the good seed. The seed falling on good soil refers to someone who hears the word and understands it. This is the one who produces a crop yielding a hundred, sixty or thirty times what was sown. Isaiah speaks, doesn't he, of fruitfulness in every way. The rain will water the earth the buds will flourish, it yields seed from the sower, for the sower, and bread for the eater. So is my word that goes forth from my mouth. It won't return to me empty. And of course the seed is the word of God. And as we take it in, it will become fruitful in our lives. How fruitful is your life? Are you surrendered to the Lord Jesus Christ? And have you opened your heart to him? Some years ago, I was given a pocket Bible. And it was given by a lady who couldn't read the small print. Here's the Bible here. Turn to this chapter. And she's marked the Bible personally. And in this passage, because it's all about sowing, isn't it? The seed. In this passage, she wrote over Matthew chapter 13, so, and then she had an acrostic for that word. And this is what it is. S for submit to Christ. O for obedience to Christ. W for witnessing to Christ. When we sow the seed of God's word into our lives, we become fruitful. Let's have as Christians a joy-filled life and let's not allow the enemy to steal our joy during these very challenging days. I was sharing the other week with the Beach Mission team by Zoom. And Jesus shared from a boat near a beach, didn't he? The beach mission team are going to be sharing the gospel, not on a beach or by the sea like Jesus did. Their boat is IT and they're going to be sharing it over a number of weeks in the homes of families, boys and girls. Let's pray that all who listen will open their hearts to the Lord Jesus. There are many who need Christ. And when this lady wrote in, so, and the last word, witness, that's the challenge of what Christians should be and do and speak in this world. There are so many who need Christ in the boat of their lives. Let's go deep with Jesus and let's spread his love around. Amen. Let us pray. Soften my heart, Lord. Soften my heart. From all indifference, set me apart to feel your compassion, to weep with your tears. Come soften my heart, O Lord. 
soften my heart. Thank you, Father, that we can come to you this morning. You are the Father of compassion and the God of all comfort. You are not a God far away, but the one who sees and listens and responds to our faintest prayer. Forgive us for any indifference and hardness of heart. May you fill us afresh with the Holy Spirit and your love into our hearts. How we need you. As your people, may we clothe ourselves with your compassion for a lost world, a hurting world, a world that rejects you even today. Open their eyes, Lord. We pray for families and all in the health service. We pray especially for the bereaved who are still grieving. May they cry out to you and know your comfort. We pray for the persecuted church, for faith, strength, perseverance, hope and love. We pray for your church in countries where there is famine through locusts and for your people who have been refused food aid, for widows whose pensions have been stopped because they follow you, for pastors and families killed for their faith, for the bereaved through mass killings. O oh Lord, change the hearts of those who persecute and those in governments who allow this violence to continue. Your promise stands, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. We thank you for our Queen, for her faithfulness, experience and wise counsel. Thank you for the stability she has given to this country and commitment over so many years. Thank you for her faith in you. May you strengthen her today and protect her. We pray for Boris Johnson and for wise decisions for the government in days of great change and for your voice to be heard through Christian MPs. We pray that all parties seek to serve and work for righteousness and justice. We pray for their families. We thank you for the civil service, unseen, but giving stability as governments come and go. And as ministries are merged and workloads become heavier, we pray for strength and for their families too. We pray for the Welsh-speaking church, for encouragement and growth, for the way ahead in the coming months. May you hear the cry of your people for revival. We thank you for Emmanuel Kids Online, for the online beach mission reaching far and wide in the coming weeks. May you give daily strength to John and Daniel, wisdom for the days ahead. May we be encouragers and hold them with Cherry and Sarah in our prayers. We pray for Robin as she contacts schools and for your guidance for the future. May the children remember and continue to read their own Bible stories. We pray for those of our church family who have been bereaved, are ill, lonely, depressed or anxious, stressed through homeschooling. We thank you for those who have moved house and thank you for those celebrating birthdays and special anniversaries. May each one know the blessing of your peace, love and faithfulness. Please protect our children. Thank you for giftings being developed. May this be a time of building, of hearing the voice of the Lord and of growing in the grace and knowledge of the Lord Jesus. May your church stand firm together in these days. Thank you that we are one body, one spirit, one Lord, one faith, regardless of race, culture or colour. We are all one in Christ. Lord Jesus, you are our peace. Lord, thank you that it's a peace that the world cannot give. It's a peace that the world cannot understand. A peace to know, a peace to live. My peace I give unto you. We thank you, Father, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.
say the grace together. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen.